Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be taking a look at the Transformers Legacy Deluxe Class Stunticon breakdown. Before we take a look at the packaging, I do want to let you know I will not be showing the full combined Minasaur in this video. I'm going to be saving that for a separate video just about Minasaur and the Stunticon, so make sure you stay tuned for that on the channel coming very soon. In this video, I'm just going to be simply showing the robot and of course comparisons and showing the vehicle mode with some comparisons as well. So let's now take a look at the packaging. So on the very front, we have Transformers on the side. We have the Legacy logo, a really cool artwork shot of breakdown in his car mode we do have a uh, breakdown with the decepticon symbol and open window displaying the figure and the packaging up top we have a qr code so if you do scan that they'll show stats we have four or five minosaur on the side we have two really cool artwork shots one close-up of breakdown's head and a more wide shot and a really cool action pose with breakdown on the back he transforms in 15 steps there's two product shots one of the robot and karma and there's again four or five minosaur and on this side we do have the legacy artwork for the decepticon so we have megatron drag strip a Gwana Skywarp and the Insecticon kickback and that is pretty much it for the packaging so let's now get into the review. Here we have Breakdown in his robot mode. Let's start off by taking a look at the details. Starting at the very top with that head sculpt, some really nice red for the face, some yellow for the eyes, and some dark blue for the main helmet section. Getting down to the chest, mostly done in silver, and that nice light and dark blue color. There's actually some really cool venting kind of layer detailing at the stomach region. Unfortunately, there is two screw holes, but that really doesn't bother me that much. As for the arm and shoulder, mostly done in white, but pretty well sculpted. Some blue for the hands. As for the outer arm, a really nice stripe of blue, and there's a little mirror detailing from the car mode done in white as well, which I actually actually do quite like. As for the waist and crotch, mostly done in white, which is pretty cool, and the legs at the top, mostly done in white as well, but I actually really do like how they kept this detail from Wild Rider. So if you don't know, this figure is a slight redeco, repaint, remold of Wild Rider, and they actually kept this detail from him. There's these little oil canisters, which that figure does have, and I will bring out Wild Rider in just a second for a mold comparison, so I can show the differences and similarities, and overall, I think that looks pretty cool. As for the front of the legs, mostly done in that dark blue, but pretty well sculpted here some really nice details white for the feet there actually if you do move to the side we do have some really cool wheels and i do like how there's some gunmetal gray and black but unfortunately there is a mushroom peg in white so it really does stick out like a sore thumb but fortunate enough these top two are not mushroom peg which is really nice as for the back of the figure overall pretty clean there really isn't that much emptiness or hollowness pretty well filled in of course you actually do have some more kind of venting and layered effect here there's some ports but that really comes into play later we do have this whole backpack section so you can actually display this entire front car piece in two different ways so you can display it like this this is my preferred look for breakdown but if you want to like a wild rider here you can display it like this so i actually like to have them in two different forms wild rider like this and breakdown like that just so you can tell them apart a little bit more because again they are slightly similar in mold but they overall do look pretty cool like that so you can really choose in your own personal opinion if you want to and again i will bring out wild rider in just a second for comparison of course when he's facing the right way and that is it for details. Let's now get down to articulations. So the head can move side to side. Unfortunately, it cannot move up or down at all. The arm can move out and in. There is a bicep rotation and elbow bend. Unfortunately, no wrist rotation. There is a full functioning waist rotation. The leg can kick that far forward, that far back out to the side, so pretty much a full split. There is a swivel, a knee bend, and a very good ankle pivot. And that is it for articulation. Let's, let me just quickly straighten him up a tad bit, get him more into a neutral pose. And let's now get down to accessories real quick. So he does come with two. Unfortunately, one of them is not the best. So the first one is this really cool blaster, mostly done in black. And I actually really do like how the uh, handles are not painted. So they've recently made a few mistakes on some figures where they'll paint the handle. And of course, that will cause paint chipping whenever you have the figure hold it. So unfortunately, fortunately for this figure, they are not painted. So that's really good. But I actually do quite like this blaster. Unfortunately, it is not blaster piece compatible. So it's a bit unfortunate. But you can plug this in his hand. And I think that looks quite cool in my opinion. I really would have liked if this had come with two. If you're not... Um, familiar or aware, the previous Deluxe Stunt Cons like Drag Strip, uh, Dead Ends, Wild Rider have all come with two identical blasters and actually looked really cool whenever they dual wield them. For some reason, this figure does not. He comes with this really weird fin piece. This actually becomes the entire back fin for the Ferrari car mode, which is cool. I do quite like the car modes. Of course, stay tuned for that in the end of this video. But in this mode, there's really not that good of a use for it. So one of the ways you can store it is just plug it into his hand like this. This is one of the official ways by the instructions you're just you're supposed to display the accessories which um i think this just looks really odd i think it's supposed to be like a knife or a blade which by concept i know what they were going for but how it looks doesn't look that great the second way you can store it is you can actually combine the blaster and 
the whole fin piece and make the sort of sword kind of scythe weapon so there is a port there and there is a peg and you're supposed to plug it in just like that and it becomes the sort of blade um sword thing which again by concept is cool but i think probably the biggest drawback with this is the color it is very boring it would have been nice maybe if they took some of that dark blue and put a little stripe here or maybe some like red from the face and put it there i think that would have looked really nice but you can plug this in his hand which i think is just okay it's fine not the greatest i really would have preferred if they went a different route where they had given him two of the same black blaster and the whole fin piece would actually be stored and kept back here so this is actually where you attach it in the um vehicle car mode hence that uh, that's why there's two pegs of course there's two ports here that's how that works i think it would have been smarter if they had put half the fin piece here and half here and when you transformed it of course they would connect together to make one full functioning fin for the ferrari mode um, and again two blasters would have been really nice again not really sure why they did that i will never understand that but i'm actually going to move back to the typical way i store the accessories so i typically just have them holding the blaster and the fin i just kind of put off to the side that's probably how i'm going to do it when i ever display him with the other uh, Stenticons, I think that's probably my preferred look. I think that overall looks pretty cool, and I'm just going to put that fin piece off the side. And speaking of Stenticons, let's now get down to a few comparisons with his fellow brethren. So here he is with his mold mates, Wild Rider. And between the two right now, I just have to say I prefer Breakdown a lot more. That's just my opinion. I also do apologize for some reason on my figure. He always wobbles to one side. It is so annoying. I mess with this guy so much, so I really apologize about that. I've had and tried so hard to make him stand straight. I just cannot do it. So similarity-wise, the arms are the exact same sculpt. The legs are the same. The front-wise, they are the exact same sculpt. The back, they are slightly different. Um, differences. The head sculpt and the chest and, of course, the weapons are completely different sculpt. Let's actually move to the back so there is some more changes there so as you can see of course the front of the car is slightly different you'll be able to tell that a little bit more when a reason is car mode as for the legs you can see the pegs are a bit further up on this one and they're lower down on this one also this entire venting area here is completely different so there is a good number of differences and similarities but again between the two just my personal preference i like breakdown quite a bit more i would say probably the biggest drawback with this figure is the whole fin piece i do not like that whatsoever but let's move wild rider off to the side for now and here he is probably with my favorite stunt con from legacy and this bunch drag strip and again he has two identical weapons just like wild rider and dead end so i do not know why they didn't do that with this figure i think that's probably one of their biggest mistakes here but i think they look pretty cool next to each other and for another comparison here he is with the final deluxe dead ends which i think looks pretty cool next to him and again, I will do a full video covering the stunt cons. Of course, individually, I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on them. Which one's my favorite? Which one's my least favorite? Just going down the list. And I also, in that same video, completely covering Minnesota, the articulation, the details, my thoughts, how they do, what, uh, what are some things I don't like about Minnesota, all of that. So make sure you stay tuned for that on the channel coming very soon. And here he is with his leader, uh, Motormaster. I will have to zoom the camera out and move it up just a tad bit. There we go. And I think they look quite cool next to each other. And let me just take him off to the side. And that is it for comparisons, details, and articulation, and accessories. So let's now get down to transformation into the car mode. Now for transformation into the car mode, what you're going to want to do is go to the very bottom, flip up the feet just like that. So then you can actually flip in the hands just inside to the arm, just like that. Kind of straighten out the arm just like that. Fold in the hands just like that and then what you're going to want to do is open up the chest just like this and you can actually fold in the head that'll just flip up you can close this up just again and if you like to position the whole car piece separate like wild rider like i like to do of course you're going to combine them and uh, transform like this of course if you display it like this you don't have to do anything and now what you're going to do is just kind of spray or just spread the legs apart and then we can actually move to the back of the figure going to rotate at the waist like this you can then open up the legs like that just open them up you can uh, tab them together if you want to or you can just do one at a time and you're going to fold the entire leg assembly around the car like this so just fold these down like this and these will as you can see tab together there's a tab on this side and still on this side and there's actually a tab and slot there and there's two tabs that will go into the underside of the car so just get everything into place like that this will all become really flush go to the bottom put these sections down like this and then what you're going to do is just bring the arms in 
we can actually bring this entire car portion forward as well and then we can actually tab the legs or not the um the arms into place sorry there is a tab there and there is a slot on the inside so just tab that into place like that do the same thing on the other side so just tab the arm into place just like that so there we go and then for the front car portion there is two tabs here and there's slots you're just going to have to push these through just like that and this is one area of the transformation that i do not like i always am really worried for this figure and wild rider that these things are going to snap off so i am typically very careful in this section it does take some time you just got to push them through really carefully just like that push it through and then it should become very flush with the rest of the car mode as for the last step there is a tab right here and there is a slot right there that's going to tab right into place and as for the last step we do have to incorporate one of the accessories for this car mode as the fin piece of course this is the one thing i like about this piece so of course there is two pegs two ports and that will become the entire fin piece for the car mode so there we have breakdown in his full ferrari car mode let's take a look at the details here we have breakdown in his Ferrari car mode. Let's start off by taking a look at the details. Starting at the very front, we have some really nice red for the main hood section with a very classic Decepticon symbol done in purple. A really nice stripe of blue at this front grille section with some white for these headlights. If we go to the side, really cool wheels in the front. Some really nice kind of gunmetal gray silver with some black. A really nice stripe of blue connecting to the front and back of the car, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately for the back wheels, they don't look as great as the front, so there's that ugly mushroom peg. I typically don't care about mushroom pegs, but this situation I do because it really sticks out like a sore thumb. They didn't paint it, so it's really obvious. If they had painted it like black or that same kind of silver gunmetal gray, it would have looked a lot better. And the windows are done in this really nice kind of tinted gray. I'm actually really glad with this situation. Sometimes with other figures, the windows, you can see quite a bit of kibble through there. In this situation, I don't think it looks too bad. And as for this back portion, really cool venting detailing. We have this entire fin here which I'm not sure this probably might be G1 accurate to be just plain white but I really would have liked maybe some uh, blue or some of that red from the hood I think that would look pretty cool there again it is probably accurate to just be plain white and the back here overall pretty plain and I actually quite like this car mode so let's now get down to accessory storage one of them is already stored on the figure it's the entire back fin piece and the weapon storage I was actually really surprised I did not know how the weapon was going to store I was expecting there would probably be a port on the top but you actually do flip to the bottom there's this whole slot section here and there is a tab on the gun and that just stores into place just like that so I actually really like this this is really cool I'm really glad how they did that so that overall is it for accessory storage so let's now get down to one quick vehicle mode comparison here he is with stunticon wild rider so as you can see similarity wise there is some similarities here and there as for the side of the car of course these are actually the arms so as before the exact same mold so there is some similarities on the side of the car the front portion is quite different as molding here just a side by side get up close there we go the windows are quite different as well and the entire back par uh, car portion is also differently molded. Of course, we have this entire venting detailing. We have two ports here. So there is quite a few differences and similarities as of mold-wise. And I got to say again, I probably do like Breakdown's car mode over Wilder. That is just my opinion. Let me know between the two, which one do you like the most? Yes, I know. Probably Breakdown and Wild Rider are the probably the two most unpopular of the Stunticons from the Legacy line. So kind of a tough question to ask, but just let me know in the comment section down below. But that is it for this comparison. And again, if you want tons of comparison with the Stunticons, of course, um, my overall review of all the Stunticons. I will be doing a full video of the Stunticons separate from this one showing Minasaur, the full combiner, my thoughts, the articulation, everything. So make sure you stay tuned for that coming on the channel very, very soon. But that is it for the Ferrari car modes. Let's now get down to the final thoughts. Now for the final thoughts for the Transformers Legacy Deluxe Class Stenticon Breakdown. I think overall this figure is pretty good. Starting in the car mode, I actually really do like it. The stripe of blue going around the entire edge of the car is super cool. The front wheels are really well detailed. It's some really nice black and gunmetal gray. Unfortunately, the back, not so much. There's a really ugly mushroom peg. I'm typically not that bothered by mushroom pegs in some situations with this one. Not so much because it's actually painted white. So if they had actually chosen a color closer to the tire color or maybe some of that silver gunmetal gray, it would have looked a lot better. As for the rest of the car, the really nice tint 
tinted windows, doing that really nice gray. I actually really like with this situation, you really can't see that, that much kibble. With some situations, with some windows, if they choose a very clear, you know, open uh, color plastic, you can see a lot of kibble inside the car, which I'm actually really glad in this situation that is not true. Also, the hood, I really like the um, really nice purple Decepticon symbol with the red. That looks really nice as well. And the storage for the accessories is actually quite good. The fin piece stores, of course, pretty well in the car mode because that's its main use. But the weapon, I'm actually really glad and surprised how they store this. So I didn't watch that many reviews of this figure. I really didn't think it was needed because it's pretty similar to Wild Rider. So I kind of knew what I was expecting. You know, I really wasn't surprised at all, but I was really surprised of how you store the gun. I was expecting it to probably to store in like a port or something, or you just put off to the side. But with this one, you actually store it on the bottom of the car, which is quite clever. I'm actually really glad how they did that. And it does not hinder the vehicle rolling. It actually still rolls very smoothly across the, across the ground, which is quite nice. As for transformation, um, it's the exact same as Wild Rider, nothing different. So if you have a figure, you know exactly what to expect here. And if you've not gotten Wild Rider yet, I would say overall, not that hard of a transformation. I would suggest to, so actually by the instructions, they suggest to do the arms and then fold the legs. I actually fold the legs, then do the arms. I think it's a little bit easier. That is just my opinion. You can do every wish. Um, now for the robot mode, I actually do quite like it. This is definitely my preferred version of this mold. Wild Rider is a good figure, but of the two, I just have to say overall the car, the robot, the articulation, overall the design, I just like this one more. That is just my opinion. I actually do like, quite like the blaster. I'm actually really glad how they did not paint the handle because there have been a few situations recently, kind of like with Legacy Evolution Hotshot, they painted the handles of the weapon and unfortunately they've already started to chip slightly. In this situation, it's actually a white plastic gun and they only painted the entire gun portion black but they kept the handle white which is really smart i'm actually really glad they did it yes it's kind of boring how the handles why i know it would have been nice if they had done a cooler color like red or black or something yes but it does prevent paint chipping that way as for the other accessory this is where this figure slightly falls short so the whole back fin piece is the other accessory and you're just supposed to ha either put it in his hand or actually transform the gun and the fin piece into sort of an axe and it's okay it's not the greatest probably the biggest down fault of that is the um entire fin piece is unpainted which is kind of boring which of course they had to do that for the car mode i don't think they were going to paint the entire fin piece just for that you know soul uh you know sword mode accessory so i do understand why it's just a bit unfortunate i think really what they should have done which i did mention earlier in the video i think they should have given breakdown two of those really cool black pistols and had the fin piece not an accessory i think they probably should have had the fin piece a permanent part of the figure and you would actually split in half when transforming into the robot mode and each each half would be on a portion of the robot leg. I think that would have been a lot smarter in my opinion. I've heard quite a people mention that as well in their reviews. Um, as for the details of the Ramon, I actually do quite like the head sculpts. The arms look pretty cool. Articulation is actually pretty fair. I would say probably the only thing missing is a wrist rotation, but that's the exact same you know thing with Rod Rider. I knew as that was going to happen. I was expecting it. Also, the head is slightly limited. It can't look up or down, which is a bit unfortunate. Quite stock and put into place. But other than that, I actually do quite like the sphere. Yes, there are some problems here and there. Um, of course, the whole backpack, a lot of people had huge problems with that with Wide Rider when it came out. He has a pretty big backpack, but if you want to, you can actually just store or um, display the entire backpack or front car portion in two different ways. You can display it pretty much a solid piece like you're seeing now, or you can have it more spread um, out, kind of like I do with Wild Rider, so that's really up to your own personal preference. But that is pretty much it for this review. I actually overall do quite like this figure. No, it's not my favorite Stunticon. It's it's, it's an okay figure. I know uh, Wild Rider had quite a bit of um, crap, there was a lot of complaints, a lot of problems with him. I do understand, and this figure, of course, is using that same mold. So if you don't like, like Wild Rider that much, you might feel the same about this figure, or you might be different. And it's actually kind of like with me. When I first got, got Wild Rider, I wasn't that impressed, but honestly, with this figure, I think it actually changed my mind. But of course, you could be completely different. Let me know your thoughts on this figure in the comment section down below. Of course, again, I will be doing a full Minasaur Stunticon review overview video coming very soon. It might take some time to record it because of course I have to show all the sense cons I'm probably gonna I'm gonna go through all of them you know just uh, my thoughts of the robot car articulation everything accessories just a full overview of them and then I'm gonna get into the whole Minnesota and I'm gonna spend a lot of time on that show as much detail as possible and give you my thoughts so make sure you stay tuned for that coming on the channel very soon and that is it for this video and I'll see you next time